Good afternoon everybody, it's your old pal Overland Mellet here. Hope you're going well. It's nearly one o'clock and the day's almost gone, so I'm gonna make the most of it. I'm gonna head out to Richmond. Now, there's a big cemetery in Richmond, and there's one big famous rock star that's buried there, that is Keith Ruff of the Yardbirds. Yes, my father, he was always into the Yardbirds when he lived in England stuff, and he always liked Eric Clapton. Not too big on Jeff Beck or Led Zeppelin, but Yardbirds is one of his favorite bands of all time. So I don't know if my father, who lives in Cairns, I'm gonna go to his Keith Ruff's grave today. The Junction, that was one of the last places in London I lived until I moved to Sweden for a month. It's really shit though and stuff, but um, I had to stay there for two weeks, especially at a time I was really angry with my job. And here comes my train to Richmond, right on time. Leaving in two minutes. I really hope these are the new trains that have Wi-Fi's. It looks like it. They're the old ones. This train does not have Wi-Fi. So here I am at Rich So anyway, I've just arrived at Richmond right now. Yes. And it's like 25 minutes walk to the train station. So it's two o'clock. I've arrived to Richmond and I am making my way to the cemetery. Yes, yeah, so it only takes 25 minutes to walk from the station to the cemetery. The Google Maps has told me to use an Uber, but they are pretty big dumb clocks and stuff. And people should be walking instead of riding in taxis. But here's a couple of things I've been reading about the Yardbirds on Wikipedia. They were formed in London in 1963 with Keith Ref on vocals and harmonica, Jim McCarty on uh, drums, uh, rhythm guitar or Chris Derasia, bassist Paul Samuel Smith, and then like uh, the, the band is much more famous for having Eric Clapton, Jimmy Page, and Jeff Beck. Because you got to remember, like Jeff Beck, uh, Jimmy Page of like Led Zeppelin. He wanted to form a different version of the Yardbirds with John Bonham, uh, like Robert Plant and John Paul Jones, so they ended up becoming like Led Zeppelin. This is in like 1968. And so uh, the songs for the Yardbirds you're most famous for are For Your Love, Half of Soul, Shapes of Things, and Over and Under the Sideways Down. And uh, the funny thing is that they're still actually active today, but like with like only just one constant member, which is just like Jimmy McCartney, and then there's Kenny Arison, John Allard, and then, you know, uh, John Idan, uh, Jeffrey Townsend, and Mick Scavon. So, uh, and, and the albums they put out, like, uh, in the prime was, like, Five Lard Yardbirds, For Your Love, Have a Rave Up With The Yardbirds, Roger The Engine, and Little Games. That's the, like, classic uh, lineup. And then they put an album out in 2003 called Birdland. Now when I was uh, 19 years old, my father was getting interested on the internet because we've been connected for a couple of years. So after watching a documentary about the um, Eric Clapton, he asked me to look at something on uh, the Yardbirds, so I did. And then I told him, I was like, oh, Keith Reff died in like 1976. And he said, like, oh, yeah, yeah, because Keith left, like, electrocuted himself by, by playing guitar and all. And then, like, uh, he asked me to look up some information on Cream, uh, like, uh, what's happening with, like, Cream. And, and at the time, Cream had reunited for a couple of concerts at the Royal Abbott Hall. And then we were looking deep into Eric Clapton's, like, uh, discovery, because Eric Clapton was one of my father's uh, favorite uh, guitarists. Well, still is, you know. My, my dad's got all of his albums, so. Now we're at uh, Cambrian Road, Richmond, and so down the street should be the main entrance to the cemetery. Because this cemetery is pretty huge. But I'm pretty sure I won't have a hard time finding where Keith Ruff is buried because I already bought his grave number and plot number. So when you're going to go to a cemetery and look up someone famous, if you go to find a grave, they'll tell you the exact location. Uh, failing that, you can always ask the people at the office. So anyway, here's the side entrance to the cemetery. Uh, cars can't drive up it now, but uh, looks like 
Anyone can go inside. Yeah. It says, like, I was supposed to close at like five o'clock. So yeah, yeah. Huh. Richmond Park. Wait. It sounds more like a park than a cemetery. It seems like I have to walk through Richmond Park to get to the cemetery, which I had no prior knowledge of. I just used to think Richmond Cemetery was just one big plot of land with tombstones. I think I'm pr being proved wrong. So my phone says that like, I'm close to a cemetery, but there's so many different cemeteries in this area. And like, it just really blows my mind that a cemetery could be near like a whole bunch of parks and this stuff. Kind of reminds me of that cemetery I went to in the south of Stockholm where I visited dead from AM. He's surrounded by a whole, whole bunch of trees like this. So, my map says that I'm right bang in Richmond Cemetery. All these tombstones look pretty old to me and stuff. All look like they're from the 17th, 18th or 19th century. Don't know how old the cemetery is. But there's probably some newer burials somewhere, I guess. Wow, look how amazing that tombstone is, even though it's faded away in 30 years. It's, it's, I can't work out the name, but the surname is Pan Uf Hick. Died in 1991, composer, most beloved husband and father. So here is the sign of the main entrance, so that's where I am. And Keith Ref is buried in number 21. So there's many entrances. So I went in through a different one to the park, the Russian Park. So should be one like that one and stuff. Yeah. So I can't seem to find where Keith Ref is of um, what you call the Yardbirds. He's like number 21. So uh, I look a bit like later, but right now I'm quite interested in all these. War graves and stuff like people who died in like World War One and World War Two. I read online that there are a lot of these people buried here are South Africans. Um, as a matter of fact, they have like these guys are like different. Um, they're like a different type of headstone. I mean, you can look at that one and like that one. I mean, normally you see that type of one at Commonwealth War Graves, but normally if it shows uh, something like this, it means it's a, uh, a non-British colonial burial. I mean like this guy right here, he's South African. As you can tell with the um the antelope and this is Union of South Africa, Union of Strength. Uh third region South African. Uh those people actually don't were in like World War One. Union is strength. So this is at the top there. Our glorious dead. So I finally found section twenty one right uh, here. Uh, Richmond Cemetery 21, donated by Ian Clark. Now, to get to this part of the cemetery, you just remember, okay, there's the South African war graves right there. You have to walk, like, south towards um, here. And then there's another big, like, war grave section right here. So, Keith Ref's graves should be around here somewhere. And we have found it. Yes, it's just taken me Half an hour of looking through the cemetery to find the lone grave. William Keith Ref, born 1943, died in London in 1976, aged 33. I close my eyes to worldly skies and leave behind the day. And some fans have left some beautiful angel artworks like plaster moulds and it's whirred away through time. But the interesting thing was, this tombstone has only been here for uh, like less than 10 years because before then all it had was the cross and I would be, I think most Keith Ruth fans would be fuming that he didn't have any tombstones at all, you know? So this is a, a man who's been inducted into the Rockmore Hall of Fame thanks to the work of the Yardbirds and you know, without the Yardbirds, maybe there wouldn't be heavy metal or maybe there wouldn't be a Led Zeppelin or maybe Jeff Beck 
wouldn't be the big man he is known today, or maybe Eric Clapton wouldn't have joined Cream, you know? So it's really wonderful that Keith Ruff finally gets the tombstone that he deserves, not just the cross that most people get before the actual tombstone happens. And I'm quite good that the tomb has been kept in good condition. I'll give it a bit of a brush before I go out. The flowers have gone a bit. And um, there's a bit of bird poop. But uh, you know, someone else can come by and give it a polish. Then where it is. So, if you're looking for Keith's grave in Richmond Cemetery, just remember, just go looking for that big monument over there, and he's like south of that monument, just right here. Rest in peace, Keith Ref. Hope you're having a fun time up there rocking with the angels. May your memory live on. We will never forget you. God bless. Now when you're going to find Keith Ruff's grave, make sure you find this entrance uh, with the uh, house and stuff. And you're gonna go up this road, keep going up all the way to the very back until you see a big tall monument with a lot of war graves. A lot of old fashioned rusty war graves, not, not clean polished ones. And then Keith Ruff's grave is like, it may be 20 or so paces south of that. Now the important thing is when you're going to Richmond Cemetery to either visit Roy Kinnear or um, Keith Ruff, make sure you take this entrance. King's right gate, mailbox right at the front. Let's go straight from here to the front gate. And then you, the first grave you'll see is uh, Roy Kinnear from the Wonka Chocolate Factory.